In this video, I'm going to go over AP Precalculus topic number 1.12 about transformations of functions. So first we're going to talk about additive transformations. So what happens if we add a value to a function? What is the graphic uh, result? So first we're going to add a function uh, to the, a value to the function overall. Uh, so we're just going to take a function and add some number. If that number is a positive value, it's going to move the graph up. It just takes every y value and adds that value to it. If it's less than zero, it's going to move the graph down however many units, because uh, again, it's just going to take the y values and subtract whatever that value of k is. Okay. If rather than adding to the function, we add the value directly to x, this is going to affect the graph horizontally. Uh, if that value is bigger than zero, then it's going to move the graph to the left. If the value that we are adding is less than zero, so it would be like a uh, x minus two, uh, it's going to move the graph to the right. And that's a little bit counterintuitive, but if you plug in a value like zero, g of zero is going to be equivalent to f of negative two, so g of zero is equal to f of negative 2, we can see that. Uh, so I'm going to take this uh, piecewise function here that I have and I'm going to perform uh, two different operations and graph the result. So this one here, we're going to take the graph of f and move it down 1. Okay, so this point here at negative 2, negative 1 is going to be at negative 2, negative 2. This point at 0, 1 is going to get moved down 1, 2, 0, 0. This one's going to get moved down. And then this one also gets moved down to 2. Okay, this one is going to move our graph to the right one. Okay, so all of these values are going to get shifted to the right. like that. Uh, we can have multiple uh, additive transformations to a function. So we're going to graph x squared. Okay, there's what the parabola x squared looks like. Then I'm going to graph the transformation x minus 2 squared plus 3. So this is going to go to the right 2 and then up 3. So my vertex, rather than being here, is going to go over to the right 2 and up 3. And then my graph will follow from there. OK, absolute value of x. So that's our v. In this transformation, we're going to go left 3 and down 2. So the vertex of my absolute value is going to go left 3, down 2, and then we'll graph. Like so. Here, the square root of x. like that. I'm going to go right 1 and down 3. So right 1, down 3. Then we'll have our new graph. Next we have multiplicative transformations. Uh, so the first we're going to look at is if I multiply the function as a whole by some constant. Uh, that's going to be a vertical dilation by a factor of the absolute value of a. We'll deal with what happens if it's a negative in a little bit. Okay. Um, the two cases I want to look at is if that value is bigger than 1 or if that value is between 0 and 1. If it is bigger than 1, it's going to stretch the graph vertically. It's literally going to multiply all the y values by whatever that number is. So here, g of x, my dotted line, is 2 times f of x, 
So all of the y values get stretched by a factor of 2. They're all going to be exactly 2 bigger than the original function. If it's between 0 and 1, the geometric result is going to be it's compressed vertically. It's going to squish it towards the x-axis. So this point at 2 is now squished down to 1. The point here at 1 is now squished down to 1 half. Uh, and the same would happen on the negative side. It would just approach from the negative side. Okay. Then if we affect the x value and multiply the x by some constant, uh, that's going to affect the graph horizontally. Uh, so if we have f of, x, f of b x, then I have a horizontal dilation by a factor of 1 over b. Uh, so what this means is if we have a b that's bigger than 1, our graph is going to get compressed horizontally. If we have one between 0 and 1, it's going to be stretched horizontally. Uh, so here I have a graph of f of, so g of x is f of 2x. So this is bigger than 2. So what it's going to do, it changes by a horizontal factor of 1 half. So horizontally, this 2 gets pushed down to the 1. This negative 2 gets pushed down to this negative 1. And it's compressed horizontally. Versus here, my horizontal dilation is going to be a factor of 2. So it ends up stretching it. So this point at 2 becomes at 4, and so on. So the graph is stretched horizontally. So I'm going to take my same graph that we had before, and I'm going to multiply the outside of the function by 2, which is going to stretch the graph vertically. It's going to have a vertical dilation. with a factor of 2. Okay, so horizontally nothing's going to happen, but this point at negative 2, negative 1 is going to be at negative 2, negative 2. This point here at 0, 1 is going to be at 0, 2. That one will be at 2, and then this one will get pulled down to negative 2 as well. We end up with a stretched out version of our graph there. This one is going to have a horizontal dilation with a factor of one half. Okay, so it's going to get compressed horizontally. All these points are going to get squished towards the y axis by a factor of one half. So this point here at negative 2, negative 1 is going to be at negative 1, negative 1. The 1 at 0 is going to stay right where it's at. This 1 at 1 is going to get squished into 1 half. This 1 at 2 is going to get squished into 1. Okay, so it moves all the points to the closer to the y-axis by a factor of 1 half. Last, we're going to talk about reflections. So if we multiply a function by a negative, uh, what happens is it's going to get reflected in the x-axis. So I've got my graph of f of x up here. If I make it a negative, then this is going to flip it over the x-axis and be a reflection there. Here, I should have a negative there. Um, if it's the x itself is uh, what becomes opposite, then our graph is reflected in the y-axis. It's a little hard to see on this graph, but if this is my original graph and we flip it over, this piece comes over here, and then these two sides are just flipped. It's hard to see that, though. Okay, now we're going to combine multiple types of transformations here. Uh, so let's see if you can name the three transformations that are going to occur here. So we've got three things here. The negative is going to reflect it in the x-axis. This 2 is going to stretch the graph vertically. And then we're going to move the whole thing to the left 2. So I'm going to do this in stages. Okay, first the negative. If I make this negative, this point gets reflected up to here. This gets reflected down here. And the whole thing is now upside down. Okay, that's stage one. Stage two, I'm going to stretch it by a factor of two. So this is going to get pulled up here. This is going to get pulled 
down there. This will get pulled up here. Okay, then I'm going to take that whole thing and move it to the left two units. This gets moved to the left, this gets moved to the left, two units. So my resulting graph is that green guy. This next one, uh, we have two different transformations. We're going to reflect it in the y-axis and move it down three. So again, I'll do this in stages. I took this whole thing and mirrored it across the x-axis. y-axis. My graph's going to look like that. The whole thing just gets reflected and then we're going to move it down three units. Like so. Alright, so now we're just going to combine a whole bunch of different transformations and describe them. So we're going to describe the transformations uh, that would construct the graph. So I'm going to start with the negative. The negative is going to reflect this in the x-axis. This 3 is going to be a vertical dilation. And I'm using these terms specifically because this is how uh, AP has written it. So vertical dilation by a factor of 3 Okay, this 2 means I have a horizontal dilation. By a factor of 1 half. And then this negative 3 is going to be a translation down 3 units. We have three values here. Let's see if you can figure out those transformations. So there's three transformations. The one-fourth gives us a horizontal dilation of four. We have a two here, which is gonna move it left two, because this is a plus. Now, had this not been, the one-fourth been factored out, you may need to factor that out to obtain your horizontal dilation, or horizontal translation. Uh, then we have our minus 3 at the end, which moves our graph down 3, like the last one. All right, so now we're going to go the other direction, where we're going to be given a list of transformations, and we will write the equation. Uh, so we're going to write the equation for G if the equation uh, is F after going through the different transformations. So we have a dilated vertically by a factor of 5, dilated horizontally by a factor of 3, translated down 11 units and to the right 8 units. Uh, so dilated vertically means I have a 5 in front of my f of x. Dilated horizontally by a factor of 3 means I have a 1 third inside the parentheses. For the horizontal, dilation, or horizontal translation, I'm going to use parentheses and have x minus 8 to accomplish that. And then to move the whole thing down 11 units, we will subtract 11. My next one here, dilated vertically by a factor of 1 half, dilated horizontally by a factor of 1 ninth, translated left pi units and up 2.4 units. Okay, so we'll have that 1 half out front. If our horizontal dilation is 1 ninth, then we have a 9 here. Translated left means we're going to be adding pi to our x, and we're going up 2.4. We've seen graphically that when we graph these different transformations, the domain and range can be significantly impacted by all of your dilations and translations, and uh, so we're going to look at the result of that. Um, so here, the domain of a function is negative 2, 4, and the range of a function is negative 3, 5. We're going to find the new 
domain and range given our transformations. Okay, so I've got my domain and range presented. Uh, we're going to look at the different transformations. So I'm going to think about what's going to happen, what values are going to affect the domain versus the range. Uh, so 2 is going to stretch the graph vertically. That's going to affect the y values, so it's going to affect the range. A plus 1 is going to move my graph to the left 1, which is going to affect my x values, which is going to affect my domain. And then if I subtract 2, that's moving the graph down 2, which is going to affect my range. So the domain piece, uh, the only thing that's going to affect that is the fact that we're going to move this left 1. So if I move negative 2, 4, left 1, then our new domain is going to be negative 3, 3. I'm going to do these two transformations uh, separately. So I'm going to stretch... Okay. We're going to be stretching it, but I'm going to go ahead and call it a vertical dilation. Uh, so what that's going to do is it's going to multiply these values by 2. So rather than being at ne a low at negative 3, it's going to be a low at negative 6. Rather than having a high value of 5, I'm going to have a high value of 10. Then we're going to move it down to negative 6 minus 2 is going to give me a negative 8. We're going to move that 10 down to, to 8. So my new domain and range is negative 3, 3 for my x values, and negative 8, 8 for my y values. All right, so we'll do this again with a new function. This time we have four different transformations. We have a reflection in the x-axis. We're going to be stretching the graph vertically again. We're going to move to the right 3 and up 5. So the only thing that's going to affect the domain is this moving it to the right 3. Okay, which means we're going to be adding 3 to each of these. Okay, here, I'm going to again just do it step by step. So I'm going to do the reflection first. So if I have a graph that has a low value of negative 3 and a high value of 5 and I flip it, my new low is going to be at negative 5 and my new high is going to be at positive 3. Okay, then I'm going to do my vertical dilation. Okay, with them reflected, now I'm going to multiply them by 2. And lastly, we're going to move them up. So my new domain is 1, 7, and my new range is negative 5, 11. All right. My final example here, we have a table of values. Uh, graph of G is constructed by uh, three transformations, a horizontal translation right by a factor of one unit, a vertical dilation by a factor of four, and a vertical translation down five units. So what is the value of G of two? So first I'm going to construct what G of X is. Okay, if we have a vertical dilation by a factor of 4, I'm going to have 4f of a translation to the right 1. So I'm going to have x minus 1 in the parentheses here. And then we're going to go down 5. So now I can plug in 2. Okay, and we're just going to simplify this. 4... 2 minus 1 is going to be 1. Then I'm going to go to my table to find f of 1. So here's 1. f of 1 is going to be 5. So we get 20 minus 5, which is 15. Uh, so again, this was AP Topic 112, Transformations of Functions. Thank you for watching.